At the beginning of the school year, I spent a lot of time working on safety and safety demonstrations. We've got a list of safety rules that we use. In fact, that's the list that we get from Flynn Scientific. And originally when I started teaching, all I really did was sit down with that list and read through the rules in my classroom, one rule after the other one. Very quickly, I noticed that nobody in my classroom was paying much attention to what I was doing. They had the rules in their hands, but they didn't really care that much about them. I was reading them, and that was, you know, good. He can read. That was kind of the end of the whole process. So over the course of years, I started developing more and more little activities I could use with the safety rules so that I could illustrate them and make them a little bit more engaging, a little bit more interesting, and grab kids' attention so that they didn't forget the rules. So, you know, as I'd read through the rules, I'd think about, well, what could I do for this one? What could I do for that one? One of the things that started showing up maybe a number of years ago, I don't know exactly when, but they started talking about contact lenses. I actually spent some time at a couple of colleges where the lab instructors at the school stood by the doorway and looked into the eyes of each kid as they walked into the room and checked to see whether or not they were wearing contact lenses. I thought about doing that in my own classroom and figured that really wouldn't work very well. You know, that if I got right up in each kid's face as they walked in, I, some, in a very short period of time, somebody would complain about it and I'd be down in the principal's office getting questioned about what I was up to. So I, I kind of gave up on that process, but I did continue to be a little concerned about contact lenses because there, there were some like urban legend stories that I, I'd been hearing as I went around and did workshops all over the place. Stories about kids who had gone into the classroom wearing contact lenses and they were using some solvent and the, the solvent evaporated up into the atmosphere in the room. The contact lens absorbed the solvent, and the solvent would, was then changed the construction of the contact lens. It was fused to the kid's eye, and to remove it, they had to do a partial lobotomy. I mean, the stories just got more and more amazing every time I'd hear them. And, and I had a sneaking suspicion they were urban legend because I never actually met anyone that had a student that had this problem. I met lots of people that told me about, oh yeah, at the school down the road. That's what happened because that's what I heard. But I never really knew. So I got to the point of where I started thinking about it and going, well, you know, I at least want my students to be aware that if they wear contact lenses in the lab, there might be a problem. I'm not going to stop my students from wearing contact lenses in the lab for a lot of reasons. Among them, a lot of my students don't have glasses. And if I bring them in without their contacts in, they're actually going to be a bigger hazard because they can't see anything. They're going to be pouring liquid on their foot instead of into a test tube or whatever else it might be. So, a number of years ago at uh, the chemistry support group in, in our area, uh, a teacher by the name of John Brodemus brought a demonstration in to help illustrate the problems uh, of contact lenses. And I just thought it was kind of neat and I to throw it and put it in my repertoire of things to do with, with safety demos. Now, the other part of this is that demos that take a long time to prep, I'm not real good at. And not only that, but even demos that take a long time to prep, and I prep them, I might be able to find them first hour, but by fourth or fifth period, I can't find them anymore. Now, you know, I'd like to say that that's because somebody in the, you know, one of the other teachers kind of removed it, but more than likely, I put it someplace to hide it. And then I hid it from me and couldn't find it. So I like this demo because it doesn't take any effort. You need an acetate sheet for your overhead projector. And then, now that I'm actually doing the demonstration, I'll wear my safety goggles, you need a simulated eye. Now again, you can be an artist and draw a beautiful one, or you can do something like what I just did there. And then you need a contact lens. Contact lenses are easy to make. This one's a little large. I think usually they just fit over that part. 
But uh, that'll work. And now I can come into this thing and say, all right, if you're in the lab, and through some unbelievable set of circumstances, liquid gets through your safety glasses. What's going to happen if you're wearing a contact lens? Well, a drop of liquid hits that contact lens, lands near the edge, or two drops of liquid, and you'll notice what starts taking place. The liquid that splashes in your eye is wicked underneath the contact lens and is pulled actually over the eye. You go to the eye wash station and rinse it off. It does a really terrific job of knocking the material off the surface. Yeah, that's pretty gross looking. But the material that went up underneath the contact lens is still there. Now, realistically, if you, unless your eyewash station has like zero pressure, or if the lens has been fused to the eye, it's going to blow that contact lens out as soon as you put your face down in there. But still, it does show that this can be a problem. At this point, I can then talk about just the fact that, hey, if you're wearing contact lenses in the lab, we're working with volatile chemicals. It's conceivable but unlikely that maybe something will get caught underneath there, even with safety glasses on. If your eyes start to itch, they start to bother you a little bit, and you've got contact lenses, I need to know about that. We're going to get you out of the classroom, take you down to the nurse, get that eye washed out quickly. You know, if it's an itching situation, of course, if you splash something, that's an entirely different set of circumstances. We're going immediately to our eye wash station in the classroom. Again, it's a nice, simple demonstration. Takes no time. I'll do it just like this in first period. I will have lost this by second hour, and I'll make another one. And I can continue with it. I, I don't use anything that's really expensive. It's easy to do. It illustrates one more part of the safety rules and safety procedures that we set up in our classroom. When I first started reading safety rules, it took me about 20 minutes to read them. The last time I did safety, it took me four days to get through the rules because I had demonstrations, activities, stories, some true, some I made up, some about the kid down the road at the other school, and I think were probably urban legends. But the whole thing illustrated all the safety rules, all the problems that could happen. And I honestly believe that of all the things that I did while I was teaching chemistry, those first three or four days about safe ways to handle chemicals, safe things to do when you're working, not just in a lab, but anywhere where you've got volatile materials or chemicals, is probably the most valuable thing I taught the students I had in my class. Because those were things they could use in their everyday life all the time. Safety is something a lot of us look at as a, oh God, I got to do it. But the reality is, that's something they can use every day in their life beyond chemistry class. When, you, when they're coming in and going, oh, I don't ever going to need to know how to calculate moles. And you know, I really don't have a good answer to that. On the other hand, with the safety stuff, I've got great answers. Because you may be working in your garage with a solvent. You might be working in the kitchen, cleaning the floor, and you splash something in your eye, or you spill something on your hand, or you spill a couple of chemicals on the floor, you're going to know how to handle those things safely and deal with them.